Governor Ron DeSantis, how are you, sir? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I'm doing wonderful, too, sir. I'm going to ask you a question, by the way. I watch this on uh, some of my favorite shows and some shows that are hosted by reprobates. And I've noticed that a part of the media keeps rooting for Yvette Ramaswamy or Nikki Haley to overtake you in the polls. <laughs> Isn't that weird? And why are they rooting against you, do you think? Well, they've been rooting against me for a long time. I mean, as a governor, I've been the number one target of, of any governor in the country, particularly starting with COVID when I was bucking Fauci and bucking the trend. And then once we won the, the reelection by such a big margin, uh, they really, really had a target on my back. I think it's because, one, I, they know that I'd beat Joe Biden. But I think much more importantly, they've seen me actually execute on this agenda. Uh, we're so used to people running for office, making big promises, and then not following through on what they said they would do. With me, everything I said I would do as governor, uh, I have delivered. And these are big wins on illegal immigration, on education, on economy, on reducing our debt, on and on down the line, things that really, really matter to Floridians and to conservatives nationally because we've led the way. So they look at me as somebody who, in the two-term presidency, uh, you know, I have the strategic judgment, I have the discipline to be able to bring all this stuff in for a landing, and they do not want to see that. Uh, you know, they are invested in continuing in the status quo. Uh, they don't want somebody that's going to come in and actually get the job done. So they've been really uh, targeting me for many, many years, but certainly uh, in this last year, that's been their consistent thing. But at the end of the day, our folks know what the media does. They know that this is um, this is kind of how they how they play their games. And anybody that they're targeting, I think our voters look at that and say, "Well, gee, that guy must be doing something right. If the media is after him, he must be getting the job done." I notice you run on your record. You don't run from it. You're very proud of it. You've accomplished a great deal in six years as governor. And I'm not trying to create a controversy of any kind, but I also noticed that Nikki Haley, who was a governor for eight years, does not run on her record. Am I missing something? No, I mean, I, I don't know really necessarily what the record would be. Um, I think clearly with, with what we've done in Florida, uh, we came in, uh, had a big agenda, executed it. I mean, illegal immigration. Yeah, we did ban sanctuary cities. We did E-Verify. We sent people to the border to help Texas. We've cracked down on, on uh, uh, sex trafficking, human smuggling. I have boats in the, uh, off our coast interdicting boats coming in from Haiti with illegal aliens. We transported 50 illegal aliens to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, and so we've been leaning in um, on that issue, uh, which is one of the most important issues facing our country with all the nonsense that's going on down there now. And so that'll be a day one issue for me as president. You look at education. We got the indoctrination out uh, of the schools. Uh, no gender ideology, no critical race theory. We have universal school choice. Uh, these are things that are really, really significant and that have led the nation. And so we were, we've not been a caretaker uh, governor. We've actually leaned in on some of these issues. And, you know, all these Republicans, I think every single Republican who's running uh, has criticized me. Uh, for taking the fight to Disney regarding the gender ideology in the elementary schools. I mean, we had a situation in Florida where we said, and I'm a father of a six, five, and a three-year-old, so this is something that's sensitive to me and my wife, and we have a lot of sympathy for other parents out there who are raising kids in an environment where the left wants to shove their agenda down their kids' throats, and we think that that's wrong. So we said in Florida, no, uh, anything about uh, the sex or gender ideology uh, in, in schools, particularly for these younger grades, you know, Disney fought us. Uh, we, we got it enacted, but then they came and tried to get the bill repealed. They were threatening to sue over it. Uh, and so we fought back against them. I mean, we got to draw on the line in the sand with respect to these kids and make sure that parents know we're going to be there. Uh, and I know Nikki Haley has taken the side of Disney. Um, I know Donald Trump took the side of Disney. Uh, Mike Pence, all these candidates have taken the side of Disney that's corporatism. Uh, market economics is not just bowing down to woke corporations. 
uh, when they're trying to change our society or change our laws, particularly with relating to children, uh, not only do we have a right to fight back, we have a duty to fight back. And so I think that how I handled that is different than how some of those other people would have handled it. And what did Bob Iger say today or yesterday uh, at one of these uh, corporate events that they hold? Uh, he said, we're going to tamp down on the culture wars. Did you know that, Governor? So basically, you yeah. won. Yeah, look, I think it's just they have a fiduciary obligation to their shareholders to try to maximize the, the company's value. And they had a, a brand that had been very positive for many decades and it was really a family-friendly brand. And I think them getting into this issue, not just what they did in Florida, but also what they've injected into some of their programming, uh, some of the things that we see, uh, that has hurt the company. There's just no question about it. Uh, so, so I think you know, what we did ultimately uh, was provide probably a positive corrective for them. Hopefully they can get back on a better path um, and not go down uh, this road. It's also ironic, Mark, uh, of any elected official in the country, you know, I've probably helped them make more money than anyone because they were open in Florida during COVID. You know, the mm -hmm. California had them closed. I think they were closed for like a year, year and a half out in California. In Florida, we encouraged them to be open and they took their time. They could have done it even earlier. We wanted them to do it early. Uh, but they made a lot of money in Florida because we have a good environment. Uh, to be able to do business, CNBC, which is not a fan of mine, they just rated Florida the number one economy of all 50 states. And, of course, we've led the nation in net in-migration. We've led the nation in uh, economic growth amongst uh, large states. Uh, and our unemployment rate is incredibly low. So we are doing it right. Um, and I think, you know, in their heart of hearts, you know, they know Florida is a good state to do business in. They, you know, they may not have their special privileges anymore, but it's still a doggone place, a good place to do business. No income tax in Florida. Uh, it's a prospering state. Tell us about school choice in Florida, because I noticed that these candidates on the stage like to talk about it, but most of them haven't done a damn thing about it. No, exactly. And so we have universal school choice now. So parents, it's not just so our school choice, understandably, started out targeting low income families, a lot of single moms. And that's great. Uh, but our view is, is that the dollar should follow the student. And it should be about funding the students rather than funding the systems. So we now have it expanded. And that's important because, Mark, I mean, you know, you, you've got a foothold in South Florida. You had families that are working hard. They have two or three kids. Uh, you could make be making 100 grand a year in, uh, in South Florida. Uh, it didn't like you're high on the hog there. It didn't like you have just unlimited money to be, to be affording tuition. So to be able to have the money follow your student where you can direct that, to a private school, you could go to a charter school. You, yeah, a lot of times there's school choice within school districts too. You could do that. That's a huge, huge boon for parents. It's also a big boon for parents that want religious education. Um, you know, we've got a lot of uh, parochial schools, a lot of Catholic schools. We have Jewish day schools. We've got, um, you know, uh, Protestant uh, Christian schools. And a lot of parents uh, really want that component. And we want to be able to help deliver all the options to them. So people say, oh, well, if you do that, it's going to be bad for the traditional school systems. All I can tell you in Florida is we've never scored better on these tests than we're doing now as a full-blown school choice state. In the most recent uh, nation's report card, we were third and fourth, respectively, in fourth grade reading and fourth grade math nationwide. That was not the case when I was growing up in Florida. And so what it does is it empowers the parents, it's good for the students, but it also causes the other schools uh, to up their game because they got to compete for students instead of just having a monopoly over students. Let's talk about energy if we can, Governor. Uh, Joe Biden and his administration are destroying the energy sector. They're backing these uh, radical left-wing groups that are bringing lawsuits against uh, energy-producing companies to try and steal their resources, their capital, the R&D money, uh, use it like they did with the cigarette companies, although I don't ever happen to that money, but it would be gobbled up and devoured by the government, redistributed to some left-wing cause. They're also nationalizing millions of acres of land and then claiming that they are not to be developed, that is, you can't drill on them and so forth. We're going to reach a point, a choke point, where we're not able to produce what's needed in this country to run our industrial heartland. 
uh, for people to warm their homes or cool their homes, to run our automobiles and so forth and so on. This is the plan. This is what they're doing, trying to push people into EVs. This is a disaster for this country, these ideological nincompoops. Do you have a plan to counter this? Oh, just I'm so glad you asked. So we were in Midland, Texas, out in West Texas yesterday. Uh, We unveiled our plan for uh, American energy dominance. Uh, Yes, we don't want to be relying on foreign countries and so independent from that. But even beyond that, we want to be the dominant energy producer in in the entire world. That's important, one, to get prices down at the pump uh, for Americans. Uh, Two, it helps the economy overall because energy costs impact all prices. So it's relief from inflation, helps small businesses, it helps our industrial base. But maybe most important all, it helps our national security. Biden's anti-energy agenda benefits Russia, Iran, Venezuela, and China. I mean, just think about his push to force people to do electric vehicles. Where does the the minerals and and, and the things that they mine, where does that come from to go into the batteries and whatnot? Most of it comes from China. And so it makes American more reliant on China. It will uh, totally decimate our automobile industry here at home. Uh, We have these minerals. We have reserves. And Biden takes that out of circulation so you can't Mm -hmm. actually mine in the United States. And so he's making our country way, way more vulnerable um, as a result of this. And here's the thing. It will not work Um, if you want to uh, reduce carbon emissions, which he claims is the most important thing. You should be embracing things like natural gas. I mean, that's the reason why U.S. emissions have gone down because more power plants use natural gas instead of coal. Natural gas is a lot cheaper. You have the developing world that is very energy poor. Uh, What Biden is saying is somehow they're not going to be able uh, to advance their societies, Uh, because if you have abundant energy in some of those countries, it will lift a billion people out of poverty uh, over the next generation. And so I think we should be exporting our natural gas uh, to all these places. Give it to Europe so that they don't have to worry Um, about any hostile countries. We've got to choose Midland over Moscow when it comes to energy. We've got to choose the Marcellus over the Mullahs, and we've got to choose Bakken over Beijing. If we do all of that, the average American is going to do much better in their pocketbook, but our country is going to be way more secure as a result. Governor, the uh, GAO, the OMB, the CBO, they put out a joint report in May. They said federal spending is, and I use their word, unsustainable. That's the federal numbers pushers. Each branch of the government, except the the judiciary, of course. But they said it's unsustainable. And that was about last year when they said the debt, excuse me, the deficit was the greatest in American history in 2022. Well, it's doubled now in 2023. And Schumer uh, is blowing off the caps that they negotiated in May. The Senate Republicans, most of them, are going along with Schumer. You have House Republicans who are trying to fight this, trying to come up with some ideas, including an 8% cut in domestic spending, start securing the border, and so forth. And I hear, you know, general statements from some of the candidates saying, we can't do this anymore, we can't do this anymore. They never tell us what it is that they're going to do. What do you think? Well, look, if you look at the the problem we've had with the explosion of debt, uh, it's rooted back into the COVID response where they did trillions and trillions of dollars. And both parties supported this over the last three, four years. Uh, And and, and that's bad. And that shouldn't have happened. And I think the whole response, uh, looking back, we should have never done that. I think most people acknowledge that at this point. Clearly, in Florida, we fought back against that very early on. Uh, But the problem is, is they've locked in those levels of spending effectively that were justified because of the of the quote COVID emergency. You got to go all the way back, set all those spending levels back to what it was prior to that uh, 20, 2017, 18, 19 levels. And then you got to hold the line there. Uh, If you did that, you would save um, a lot of money over over a 10 year period. That should be the bare minimum to be able to do. Mark, in Florida. We have the, our cost per capita for our state workers is the lowest in America. The number of state workers we have per capita 
is the lowest in America. And yet, when people move from New York or New Jersey or Illinois, they say Florida's got great services. They're able to get their driver's license or be able to do this. They'd be able to do that. They've got no problem with the services. They're, they're, they're grateful for the services and the infrastructure. So this government is so much bigger uh, than anything that could be justified that I think that they should think big, um, and I think that they should do that. Uh, with Schumer and these guys, uh, they have no, no regard for the next generation. Uh, a lot of Republicans, the old guard Republicans, have joined with the Democrats, and so this is a bipartisan problem. Um, mm-hmm. Ultimately, I do think we need structural reform, things like a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution, because, Mark, you and I could come, we could get the budget in great shape, We could change the trajectory and maybe have an agreement, let's say. But then there'll be another election two or four years later. And guess what? The new Congress people come in and they undo it. Uh, And that's been the problem with all these budget deals that have happened really since the 80s. You put these caps in, you turn around and then they and they violate it, you know, the next year. Governor, if people want to learn more about your campaign or get involved, where do they go? Our website is uh, www.rondesantis.com, rondesantis.com. You can also uh, text the word FREEDOM to 512345, FREEDOM to 512345. We appreciate everybody's support. Uh, We will turn this country around, and we will not let you down. All right, Governor, my best to you and your bride and the family there. God bless you, sir. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.